Hi guys and welcome back. Today I'm working on a digital illustration and it's been a little while. I think the last one was that Naga piece that I did which might have been a little over two weeks ago and I love digital so I didn't want to spend too much time away from it so today I'm diving back in and this piece ended up taking me much longer than one I thought it would and two how long I actually thought it had been when I'm editing it's always interesting to see how much time and footage I've gotten of a piece. And it's surprising how consistent they tend to be. I work on a pretty regular schedule. So when I import them, usually the footage that I have is somewhere between two hours if it's a really short piece or four hours if it's something more complicated. Uh, but this one was closer to maybe eight hours of footage. And for every piece that I record like that, there's always lots of footage that I don't record because it's just prep work, me finding resources. So it's a lot of stuff that I'm doing to prepare for a piece that doesn't even get included in that timeline. So honestly, I was just super surprised at how long I had spent on this piece, but that's a good thing because I'm wanting to get back into spending more time on each piece. There have been times in my life where I'm able to devote more time to each piece. And then as school came, I kind of depended on the class and my workflow, but it pushed me in some ways to work faster, which is really good. But as I got into YouTube, I started needing to produce more and more pieces, which is also very good. It helps me get a lot more ideas out, but it also means that each piece that I tend to do is a lot shorter than I would prefer if I had all the free time in the world and all of the time to work on a piece. So it's kind of a balancing game of spending enough time on it that I feel happy with it, but not so much that I end up reworking stuff. And I do actually feel like recording things and needing to move on to the next piece has helped me in both ways. It's helped me to be able to spend time on something and dedicate that time, but it also helps me see what point I need to move on from that. Uh, but I feel like I've been racing through a lot of the pieces that sometimes I would like to spend a little bit more time on the prep and the line work and all the bones that go into the piece so that when I get to the final, I feel like the structure was there to create a good piece. And that's what I wanted to focus on for this one. I wanted to get back and making sure that it had all the elements that I wanted. And if there was a point where I wished that I had included something or knew that it wasn't quite right, I wanted to fix it and I didn't want to just deal with it. And there were a few points on this piece that I did end up spending quite a bit of time reworking it. And that's really the thing that I think added a lot of time is that there were several things where if I had had those plans and I knew that I needed to change it from the very beginning, it would have been a lot faster because I could have inc um, incorporated that right away. But uh, the first one is that I have these two characters and the way that I have the one behind the front one positioned, it felt just a little bit crowded almost. It just didn't really look compositionally comfortable. And it's something that as I was doing the sketch, I breezed past it. I started onto the line work and I had a feeling that it just wasn't, it wasn't quite right. Looking at it, it felt just a little unsettled. And sometimes when it comes to compositions, I can't quite pinpoint exactly what it is or exactly what rule it is that makes me feel like it's not quite there. But sometimes when I look at it, I just, I know that it's not right there. It's not what it needs to be. And that was the case for this one. It felt a little bit congested, a little bit tight where the characters felt like they were just perfectly filling in the space and a little bit too perfectly, like the edge of that character on the right, it felt like her hair was just following the straight line of the edge of the page. And just everything was just a little bit too same, same, same as far as the difference between the space from the edge of the piece to several points on the characters. And that's something to pay attention to. If you see distances that are very similar over and over again, maybe some things you can mix it up so that I have a little bit more variety. But, but anyways, I, I knew that I needed to position her a little bit differently pretty much right as I was getting into almost being finished with the line work. And that's when I decided that I wanted her to overlap that front character a little bit. So I ended up going back in and adding her arm so that it's wrapping around her. And they have a little bit more interaction between them, which I really like. I think that that was a big improvement. I think that if I had started from the very beginning, knowing that I wanted them to pose a little bit more together, I 
probably would have chose a different pose, but ultimately I like that they feel like they belong a little bit more together. That's also something that I want to do more of. I want to do more characters that are interacting, that in, that are in the same world and they're embracing each other kind of like this. So that was helpful for me to push myself just a little bit closer to that. But that helped ground her a little bit more in the composition. She had a little bit more purpose there. And that really helped, I think, just moving forward with having this second character in this piece. Having just that little bit of overlap really did fix some of the issues that I had with her. And right now I still have it pretty close to that original composition where I haven't resized or repositioned the characters. But a really helpful tool when you're working digitally with testing new things out is there's a little icon right below history that will duplicate this whole layer or not the whole layer, the whole document that is. So I can take that piece and completely have a new duplicate one. And I like to do that when I want to test out some really dramatic changes and that way I can test them out. I can do a lot of things to it because there's only so far back that history will, will remember. So I like to create a duplicate and then I can really just tear into it, make a lot of changes. And with that, I tried it where I changed the composition to more horizontal and I shrunk them down quite a bit and I tried out creating more graphic elements surrounding them to fill in that space. I also tried shrinking them down, making them even larger. I tried a lot of different repositioning things and tilting them so that they'd be leaning one way or the other. And that is super helpful when you're struggling with compositions. Sometimes the right choice is to cut more off and sometimes it's to give it a little bit more space. And for this one, it ended up being that I needed to shrink the characters down just a bit so that they didn't feel quite so perfectly pinned in by the edges of the piece. And once I shrunk them down just a little bit and I tilted them just slightly so that they just had a little bit more solidity in the way that they were standing, it really fixed a lot of the problems. Sometimes I just have this nagging issue with a piece. And once I finish fixing one little thing like this, it was actually pretty quick and easy to implement. It felt a lot more right. And I was able to move on and feel excited about the piece again, because I felt like it had direction. And I wanted the coloring of this piece to feel very graphic in a way. So I wanted that front character to be mostly lavender. And then the second character, she ended up being mostly blue. And I was testing out colors for the background and I was still stuck in a very cool tone for everything stage. And ultimately I decided to give it contrast and I changed the background to more of an orangey yellowy color. And it changes a little bit. I add a few more layers on top to add a gradient to it, but ultimately having a warm background with the cool characters on top creates a lot more contrast. So they stand out, you can see their contour a lot better and it just reads a lot easier. And that is a tool that sometimes I don't use as much because I tend to like my colors to be very analogous and analogous is when the colors are very close together on the color wheel. Actually, they're right next to each other. So I tend to like to do palettes that are like yellow, green, green, blue, or like this very purple, blue, blue, green. And sometimes I get stuck into that and I don't incorporate new colors as often, but that really did save this piece. It helped have that definition that I really wanted it to have. And I think that that would be a good thing for me to give myself a few assignments is color composition and color theory because I am a little bit in the analogous color palette rut, I guess. Um, I just really enjoyed them. So I don't feel like I'm in a rut, but I do think that I'm limiting myself and my options because I'm gravitating towards these colors that I find really pleasing right off the bat. So I would like to get a little bit more practice as far as combining different colors that aren't things that are automatically right next to each other. And that is it for today. I had a lot of fun working on this and I enjoyed the fact that it took so long. I think that it definitely spoke to how much I enjoyed this piece by how little I thought it actually took to paint it. But yeah, I just feel really satisfied with it. and. It shows me what kind of stuff I want to do more of in the future, but I do have prints of these two available. So if you'd like to own one, I've got a link in the description as well as in the end card. And I've got lots of other stuff there too, like original paintings and I have buttons and lots of goodies over there, but I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays. So I will see you guys at my next video. Thanks for watching.